Hey guys, Paul here. Welcome back to the channel. So today I have a mini instrument cluster screen for Tesla Model 3 and Model Y to share with you. So this screen is actually sits on the steering wheel columns on your Tesla. So today I will show you um, what comes in the box and then step-by-step -step installation on this screen and then at the end we'll test the screen how it functions also um, i will compare this screen to the nine inch screen both nine inch screens and the mini screens are from hands show also that screen right there the hidden sud screen so I will compare all three screens at the end of this video and see the difference between each screens and I'll show you which screen would fit more your lifestyles and the functionality that you need. Let's go. All right, let's see what comes in the box of this mini instrument cluster display from Handshow. So first thing as you can see here is the instruction manual. So inside the instruction manual, it's included with both instruction for um, Intel version and also AMD version here. All right, next, this is all the wire harness that you need. So this display came with um, only one set of wire harness with two versions of the plugs here. Um, so the Intel is this end right here, and then the AMD version, which is the newer um, generation cars, would be this end of the cable. I have the Intel version, I have 2021. So I will only need this right here. So I can just ignore this and then um, I will try to hide it somewhere inside the panel. So this side is where you connect from the MCU to the display. So here is the display itself. This is the front where the screen is and this is the steering wheel columns panel that we will replace from the OEM one and this is the plug where you plug to this um, cable right here so we'll plug this together later um, during the installation all right now let's go install this mini display in my Tesla Model 3 before we start the installation you will need um, plastic plier tools um, I got this from Amazon.com. I'll put the link in the description down below. Also, um, you will need the masking tape so we can manage the cable underneath the dashboard. All right, um, and I also put the link of this mini instrument cluster display in the description down below. Also, special discount code for you. Now, let's start the installation. So first thing first, we have to remove this trim panel right here, which holds the dashboard piece together. Now let's remove that. Try to use the trim remover. So it all locked by the clip. There you go. Just came out just like that. So save this piece right here. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other side too. Now we will start pulling this dashboard right here up all the way the whole piece so just try to be gentle make sure we don't break any clip there you go just like that as you can see it's not super hard so you do one pull then the whole panel will come up after you pull out that dashboard make sure these metal clips they're still there in place 
so when you put them back they will lock back in place so after we remove the dashboard we have to um, remove the steering wheel columns cover right here on the top but we have to adjust the steering wheels first so we just go to steering wheels right here now we use the steering wheels control to go all the way down and then all the way out so we can take this part out so you have to take this piece out first so these two plastic clip we have to remove it out first make sure we don't lose it just pop it out like that on both sides there you go there you go okay let's now remove this piece right here so try just just try to remove this the cover part first just push it in a little and then get the removal tools in there and then pop it right here it should have some kind of clip then we can pop it open there you go so one clip right here there so just one more clip right here there you go there you go it's pretty easy to remove actually not not as hard as I think so now um, this piece is out we have to take this cover and then replace it on the hand show one All right in order to do that we just have to squeeze in this right there it's also the lock on the side right here so make sure you pop that open first on both sides and then you pinch in here pinch in this one last one there you go now it came right off now we have this piece um, right here okay now we just have to put it on the one from hand stroke Done. Really, really simple. Okay, so before we install the display back on the column, then we have to get this cable um, lined up and then pre wire it to the column first. I'm not gonna uh, plug it in yet, but we have to remove this panel right here to cover the computer unit that we are going to connect it. And um, also, we have to remove this piece. This one should be easy to remove. Just pop it open like that. And it will come down. You have to unclip. You see the light? It's a clip right here. Just unclip that one. The light's gone now. And then just unclip the speaker. Okay, so the speaker plug is a little bit tricky. Um, you probably need something uh, really small to pinch in hard enough, pull at the same time then it should come out just like that. Okay, now we can remove this panel entirely. And then now we're just going to um, get this cable ready. I'm just gonna run the wire first before I even plug it in. Okay, I'm just gonna try to get this end right here. The end that we are going to um, connect to the display out from the bottom. Up. There you go. So now, now we just run the wire up here so we'll hide in here and then throughout underneath the dashboard so right now I think I have we getting ready to plug and unplug underneath here okay so before we connect and disconnect the wire from the MCU uh, make sure you turn off the computer units first go all the way down and then just power off everything the whole power of the car should be off there it goes off now now we're ready to plug it and plug it and then when it's ready we just press on the brake and the car should restart itself up and we have 
about two to three minutes to plug it in and, and unplug. You should have plenty of time. Um, if not, um, if you took longer, then you just have to um, just restart the car. Just just leave the cable the way it is, and then we just close everything, lock the car, and then leave the car for like at least an hour, and then everything should come back normal. All right, let's do that now. Now we have to locate that. See that old BD plug right there. In there, that's a gray color on the inside. So it's really dark and tight space um, underneath the glove box where the MCU unit is. I will demonstrate it to you right here how are we going to insert the plugs. So imagine this is the gray um, plug. So it should already connect it like this in the car. Then you have to unplug it, make sure it's gray color and use the white hand show um, plug, the male plug and then you plug into female on the MCU unit itself then you would plug the gray plug from the car that we just unplugged from the beginning plug it in the white plug from hand show just like this then we'll complete um, the connection so this plugs, two plugs right here, or the whole cable, um, basically just um, extract the information from the computer to the display. You are not modifying anything or changing anything to the MCU unit at all. What am I doing here? It's basically take the information that the display need and then um, take it from the computer unit and then transfer it to the display. Now come the trickiest part, um, probably not the hardest, probably the trickiest to get into the right position to get ready and plug and unplug the OBD port. Let's try it now. So I found it's easier to basically put yourself in the upside down position like that. Turn that up just like that upside down and then and then poke your head in just like that so you can see everything underneath get those cable ready when you unplug and plug it so I finally got it done mission complete as you can see here in the gray, the gray plug plug into the, the hand show port right there the female one and then the male plug, plug into the male um, port over there. I'm sure you can see there. There you go. Okay, so I just um, plug the wires, and I'm gonna press the red. It should restart. There you go. Restart. There you go. Okay, now let's try to connect the display, the mini display, and the column first before we actually install it. Make sure it works. Just connect it. As you can see, there's a little um, beginning animation there. All right, awesome, it's working right now. Okay, now let's put the steering wheels columns back. Uh, make sure you run the wire to the back of the column and then just you know try to put back where it was when you pop it out in first. There you go. So two hands, good grip, pop it in. And then same here, there you go, that's it, really easy. Now we just um, push this pin back in, that's it. All right, now we just have to put um, the dashboard back on. And I still have the old cable from, let me see, this is the old cable from that screen. Um, I will see if I can plug it in all together and so we can test it. Okay, so the installation is pretty much done. A little bit easier than that night in screens over there so I was able to connect both screen at the same time um, to my car. So later we'll compare side by side um, in a minute. So now let's go through the setting of this little screen real quick. So to go to setting, you basically just hold the button right here on the screen on the right. You hold it to the right and then 
the setting will come up. There you can set, let's just go down. So just go down and I'll select each setting. Find high temperature, time zone, um, the themes, night themes or day themes, pretty much light or dark. And then temperature, miles or kilometers, English and UI. So there's two different UI. So this is UI number one. Um, so that's UI number one, as you can see, car information. Um, the range right here in miles and then clock and then you have um, speedometer in the middle and also the distance between cars um, during autopilot and your gear selector on this side and then your battery level in percentage temperature and all of the signals will be up on the top there all right, now let's check out the UI um, number two and see what it looks like. And then when you go back, you pretty much click on the right again, then we'll go back to the, the main screen. So this is UI number two. So only different when, when you park the car and this will appear. But when you drive, this will change to speedometer. You have exact same information, except this, it's not always there. I did put this dashboard correctly yet because I want to connect to that screen so we can compare side by side. Okay now I, ha I got the perfect spot to put on the 9 inch screen. Let's start from the screen size. So this is 4.5 and this is 9 inches screen and that little thing it's probably 3 inches compared to everything else and that is uh, more like a, a digital clock monochrome display so these two are full hd color display this is the smallest screen and it doesn't change the whole design of the car at all um, it display basic information speed battery percentage when you park gear selector and then the turn signals but these two um, display a little more information um, let's see the top one I will scroll down click and then now as you can see here they're really really similar um, in layout and the front even even the front of the speedometer pretty much um, really really similar so even though this is like three times bigger on the regular display they are displaying exact same information except you know the speed here has two locations which is one round here original kind and then digital in the middle this one just don't have this and you pretty, pretty much don't need it the car information these two are identical this one a little bit bigger not much bigger actually as you can see um, pretty much they're all all the same even in the size wide and this one even closer to you um, to see than this so the big difference this and this is of course the size of the screen and also this is touch screen I can change to um, Apple CarPlay here so this is not touch screen this won't do anything if you're touching it so this is touch screen and another big difference is that this one is also Apple CarPlay and Android Auto so this has Bluetooth built in this one does not have Bluetooth built in at all so it's only display um, all the information from the car this does um, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto so I can use all the apps here inside the Apple CarPlay and you can choose a screen that is derived from here you have you have basic information here and then all the apps still working and it's a lot of complaint on this one to, from owners is that it's big it's nice but then it blocks the event um, right there in the middle but somehow you still can get some event on the side here you just have to adjust um, through your your main screen for you know where the airflow it's going just adjust the airflow going to the both sides then I think it's, it's not that bad but this one let me remove this real quick this one does not at all so this is where the air 
come out and this is displays all the way here and it, sh it it's actually here I'm sitting it's actually sit right beneath where the air the air comes out to you in the middle right there so as far as um, airflow from your AC vent here wise I believe this is probably the best one and then this one um, this one is smallest it block like a couple inches in the middle right here but this one block the most airflow so yeah this is close um, side by side comparison between three screens right there um, you want basic easiest to install would have to go to this one and this one probably right in the middle you have to because you have to connect to the main MCU unit but this one of course go to the back of the right there on the bottom of the center console let me show you in the picture real quick All right that's it so um, to me I think if you need more functionality I would go for this one and then all you need is the basic information and nothing else at all just go with this and it's you know keep your um, original design of the Model 3 and Model Y clean and if you want a little bit more information and then doesn't block airflow at all then I would go for the one on the steering wheel column this one the so mini instrument cluster display this one really really awesome so uh, they all works well it depends on your lifestyle it's like if you like to have a Android Auto or um, Apple CarPlay in your Tesla then definitely go for this one if you don't care for that you want enough screen to just look at in the front then go for this if you want to keep everything super clean then I'll go for that all right so that's the conclusion for the comparison between three displays here are all three screens side by side in motion both day and dark modes I got that screen to go back up, the little screen. There, let me turn on the signals. You can see they're all really synchronized together with the car. The other side. You can see right there. Let me clean up everything, um, put the dashboard together, and then I'll show you what it looks like what this display look like um, when I drive the car and an overall look of the display. Now, let's see what it looks like at night. I think all three screens are really awesome. Additional information for a driver right in front of you because um, somehow it, it's already been a year and I try to get used to that one screen, one big screen in the middle, but then usually uh, when I drive on the freeway, by the time I look at the speedometers, I went way too fast um, than the speed limit. So uh, I love to have something right in front of me so I can see that um, speed limit, which is the most important thing when you drive, especially when you um, take a road trip or drive on the freeway. I'll put the link of these all of these three products, three displays in the description down below. And thank you so much for watching today's video, guys. Don't forget to click like if you like the video. Don't forget to subscribe for future content and support the channels. We'll see you on the next video.